What's up guys, it's Endymion, and today I got something a little different for you all. Now this video will be full of speculation and theories, and I have to make sure everyone knows that I could be totally wrong about everything in this video. But the nature of From Software's games is that there is this nebulous space between fact and fiction when it comes to their lore that captivates someone like me to no end. So this video will be just me diving deep into the darkness between it all and just having fun with it. Also, this video will have major spoilers for Elden Ring's story, so if you haven't finished it, well, now you know. Anyway, let's begin. So what do I want to talk about? Well, today I want to speak about a certain weapon within Elden Ring that's been puzzling and captivating me since I got it. The weapon in question is the Sacred Relic Sword. It's a weapon you can obtain by defeating the final boss and using its soul with the weird grandma in Round Table Hold. Anyway, as soon as I got this weapon, my mind went into a frenzy of theories. Why does it look like that? Where have I seen this thing before? And the item description of this weapon is... Who, baby? We'll get into that in a second. Firstly, the weapon is a coiled sword with a golden hue, likely because it's ties to the Elden Ring. But what struck me as a big WTF moment was once I got it, I had to go back to another game to see if I was crazy or not. And so I reinstalled Dark Souls 3, made a new character quickly, and strutted my cheeks to the first boss in that game, the big silver dude named Udex Gundir. And in order to initiate this fight, you have to pull a sword out of the guy's guts to start the fight, and... Hold on, wait a second. The sword you pull out of Mr. Gundir looks almost identical to that of the Sacred Relic Sword from Elden Ring. Well, that's weird. Anyway, I quickly slap the boss around like a red-headed stepchild and obtain the item called the Coiled Sword. The Coiled Sword states... Thrust into the Shrine Bonfire to restore its power and enable travel between bonfires. This sword is only bequeathed to Chosen Ash as judged by the Udex who awaits the arrival of Ash as a scabbard. One look at this coiled sword and immediately you can see the similarities to the Sacred Relic Sword. Of course, it could just be an easter egg, but I'm insane and like to look into things way more than the average person, so that isn't enough to satisfy my twisted curiosity. So now, let's look at the Sacred Relic Sword's lore description, which states, Sword wrought from the remains of a god who should have lived a life eternal. Thoughts on what the weapon pretends are many and varied. Some consider it the mark of a great sin or a sign of great devastation. Some think of it as the end of an age, while others, the beginning. Okay, so this description is either trolling the hell out of all of us, or it's the single most important piece of lore within all of Elden Ring, and I'm not even kidding. So, here's my theory. Could this sword be the original sword that all bonfires within the Dark Souls series is based upon. Before you flame me in the comments and call me an idiot, first off, I know I'm stupid, so that's redundant, and secondly, I am now going to dive head deep and go crazy with theory, so just let me rant, but obviously let me know what you think in the comments below. The lore, I mean, not that I'm stupid, that's obvious. Anyway, firstly, I want to point out that once you defeat Radagon, who is the male side of America, the cutscene shows Radagon's body slowly sinking below only for the Elden Beast to rise with Relic Sword in hand. The lore of the sword clearly states that it's a sword made from the remains of a god who should have lived a life eternal. So the sword is quite literally made out of the essence or body or whatever you want to call it of Radagon and America. Meaning this sword is is Radagon and Merica, like you are literally wielding them as a weapon. When you look at the sword, it has this almost spinal cord look to it, and the twisting of the coils could signify each coil being a side of Merica. One coil is Radagon, the other is Merica. Combined, they are the sword, and the golden hue is the whole Elden Ring's power nonsense. The hilt of the sword even looks like a pair of tiny arms or hands, making me believe that this weapon is indeed 
seed made out of the body of the Eternal Queen. Now the very notion that we're wielding a sword made out of the Chosen God of the Outer Will is completely knucking futz to begin with, however, the fact the lore entry says the sword could be a mark of a great sin, which I mean it kinda is, since we literally burned down the Earth Tree with the help of Melina in order to get inside and face Radagon is definitely as sacrilegious as it gets, but the fact the weapon also states it's a sign of great devastation is equally intriguing. I also need to state that way back before Elden Ring released that George R.R. R. Martin, the guy who wrote a ton of the lore for the game, said in an interview that Elden Ring was a sequel to Dark Souls. And I mean, you can debate that all you want, but the guy definitely said it, and I believe him because it's no coincidence considering just how much DNA Elden Ring shares with Dark Souls over any other From Software game in the past. So what the hell does this have to do with Dark Souls, I hear you asking? Well. I think that the design of this sword and the fact of bonfires within the Dark Souls series shares a similar design is not just an easter egg but a deliberate notion by From Software and Papa Miyazaki that the events of Elden Ring may have influenced the eventual story and sequence of events within Dark Souls. To start, From Software loves trees within their games. You got the Great Hollow in Dark Souls, the Ur Tree in Elden Ring, not to mention the Sword of final boss of Demon Souls is inside a big tree looking thing as well. But it's the fact that the place of origin that we always reset to, whether it's being killed by monsters or getting eaten by mimics, we return to one nexus point upon death. I mean the bonfire. Now I think the coiled sword here signifies more than it lets on cause when we think of Queen Merica, she is known as the Eternal because she sealed destined death away to ensure her rule would live on forever and once she's defeated alongside Radagon and the Elden Beast, we turn hers and Radagon's essence to a degree into a weapon that houses her Eternal-like powers. That same sword that holds the Eternal essence of Merica is then found within every Every bonfire across Dark Souls and exists as a point where those who are linked to the shrines can be reborn anew. And when you think of it, the bonfire shows an undying flame that burns eternally, which is pretty weird. But when you think about it, how do we get inside the Earth Tree to begin with to face Radagon and all that? Alright, we have to use the eternal flame of the fire giants to burn the literal Earth Tree open like a hot pocket so we can enter and start start the journey to Pound Town on some would-be gods. So maybe, and again I can't prove any of this, but I'm in total theory stupid monkey man mode now, so maybe the fire of the giants has some sort of residual effect or connection to that of the bonfires. Cause the fact the earth tree must be burnt by an eternal flame and has a coiled sword that allows people to be reborn and has the direct connection with the sword being made out of the literal god who was eternal, I mean, come on guys, come on! So why are there so many coiled swords, I hear you say? Well, for all we know, the sword could have been replicated, or maybe each coiled sword reigns from a different version of the lands between, as the fact Elden Ring, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro all share so much interconnected DNA, there could be some sort of multiversal thing going on here, where all of our own playthroughs of these games are each considered to be their own version of the events taking place. I mean, the soul of Cinder from Dark Souls 3 is literally supposed to be us as the players in a way. That's why it uses all the abilities from all different kinds of play styles like swordplay, magic, spears, whatever. It uses all the styles because it is literally an amalgamation of all of us. Not to mention that Dark Souls has kingdoms like Lord Rin and then eventually Lothric, and these places are born upon the ashes of the old. Then there's Merica's Golden Order and their age which was born upon the ashes of the dragons and their age of rule prior to that as well. Every one of these games are cycles doomed to repeat infinitely with various circumstances and outcomes all weaving endlessly into a pool of essences from all walks of life. And when water is mixed and substances are combined, they coil like the sword and they become one, a single, chaotic, yet sacred relic of a bygone age, the mark of a great sin.
Okay, I'm done for now. I know this is crazy and I could totally be wrong, but please let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Let me know what I got wrong, right, blah, blah, blah. And if you liked the video, maybe share it with your grandparents. Or if you hated the video, send it to someone you dislike to ruin their day too. Thank you. Thanks to my patrons for all their help, and let me know if you want me to do more theories like this in the future, and I'm Endymion, I'm gonna go scream into the void now, and I'll see you in the next one.